Dan. How you doing, Paddy? I'm doing good. All right, cool. Um, before we start this debate, I'd like to um, let me South be made known. My name is Dale Garland, and I'm from Queensland, Australia. And how about you, Paddy? Do I have to say my full name? Yeah. Uh, I'm Paddy Medill, and I'm from New Zealand. Cool. All right, let's get started, shall we? Sorry. Can you hear me clear? I can hear you clearly. Cool, I can hear you clearly. Sweet. All right, I can cool. I can prove to you, Paddy, that Jesus Christ is real. All right. All right. One way to prove that Jesus Christ is real is through visions and dreams. That doesn't prove anything, though. How do you know because, that? Um, because that's completely subjective. You can't prove that you have visions or dreams that mean anything more than just a vision or a dream conjured up by your own mind. Uh, can I tell you about the dreams and visions I had of seeing Jesus Christ? Sure. All right, I had a vision of seeing Jesus Christ. There were people in the water, and there, be, there were people tossed around in the waves. Then I heard a voice. Then when I looked, at, I beheld seeing Jesus flying through the air over to this one ship where there was a dove there. It was very great. Jesus looks like he, was, he, he has water within his belly, and Jesus looks like me or you. Second vision I had of seeing Jesus. One night I went to sleep. Then I was surrounded by these mean guys, right? Then they were all pointing at this one part. And they said, it is him. It is Jesus of Nazareth. Then I looked in and then I saw Jesus Christ. It was like, yeah. Then Jesus Christ came to help me. Jesus Christ had a bow and he was smiling. I could see Jesus smiling. Third vision I had of seeing Jesus. Okay, I'll tell you how I see seeing Jesus Christ in a vision okay one night I went to sleep then I seen this dark person and this dark person was trying to draw me to it I yelled at the dark person I said I am free from the law of sin and death by the blood of Jesus Christ then suddenly I heard this wonderful voice up in the sky started to speak in unknown tongues and the ground started to shake then as the ground started to shake I then felt a point upwards into the clouds. Then as I was going up, I felt this great love, joy and peace flowing through me. And I was smiling. I can remember it so clearly. And as I went up into the clouds, then as the clouds faded away, then I saw with my very eyes, Jesus, I saw water within him. His face was side on. It was moving and there was thunder in the distance. And when I seen Jesus Christ, I heard Jesus say, um, to the devil take hands off my children they are mine so Jesus was very angry with the devil then all I remember is going back down and this big fire it was like a big fireball come down and it was like a ball of protection for me and then as I went out of the vision I seen where that evil person was and it was all fire there here is a bible verse it's in um, 2 Kings 1 verse 14 behold fire came down from heaven and burned up the two captains of the former fortified forties with their fifties. Therefore, let my life now be precious in your sight. Yeah. Oh, no, that was Isaiah 24, verse 1, sorry. So, yeah, they're the visions I had of seeing Jesus Christ. Now, you can't prove me wrong now. Um, I can't prove you wrong, but you can't prove you right. You know how I can prove I'm right? No, you can't prove it. All right. Well, one way of of me proving Jesus Christ is real is um, is what I did. I called out to Father God and asked Father God to show me Jesus Christ in visions and dreams. Jesus Christ came to me. Now. Um, Paddy, if you were to call out and ask Father God to show you Jesus Christ in a dream and a vision, he'll come to you. I prove it. Sorry? Prove it. Prove it? Well, you, you're the one who needs to call out. Are you willing to call out to Father God now and ask Jesus Christ to show himself to you in a dream and vision? Uh... 
um, or whatever. Say it now. Right now? Yeah, sure. All right, God, come give me a vision, whatever. I don't know. Well, this is how I don't you know say what I'm it. To say. I'll say it. You repeat after me, Heavenly Father, God. Heavenly Father, God. May I pray that Jesus Christ. Sorry. May I pray Jesus Christ. I think you're breaking up on me here. Can you hear me? Yep. So, dear Heavenly Father God, show me Jesus Christ in dreams and visions. Um, what was the first bit again? Heavenly Father God. Heavenly Father God. Show me Jesus Christ. Show me Jesus Christ. In a dream and a vision. In a dream and a vision. Well done. Jesus will come to you. And if he doesn't? It, whenever he feels that he'll come to you, because he's came to me, he's no respecter of persons. Because if Jesus does, if Jesus d did come to you, then that would prove me right, wouldn't it? Not necessarily. How, how would you describe that? Well, I can, just by saying, like, just by calling out to God and all that, I basically subconsciously put that thought into my head any dream that I have doesn't necessarily have to be like a God given dream it could just be a result of me thinking about it but do you, do you think do you believe that dreams can happen without thinking about it no everything in everything in any dream is completely made up from short term and long term memory can you prove that though uh, uh, yes, if you Google the science of dreams, you'll find it out. So, the science of dreams, they say that dreams are made up thoughts. Yeah. But where's, where's their proof and evidence of that, though? I mean, like, that's he say, that's their say. No, it's not. It's um, established science. But then you would know that they're right because it, you've had dreams in that, haven't you? Uh, yeah, but none of them have ever meant anything. How do you know they don't mean anything? Because they're usually complete nonsense. Complete nonsense. So, so um, if I think of something in a day and it's something important and I dream of that at night, that's nonsense. It's not like... Oh, so it's not nonsense? It's not actually... You there? Yeah. In the dream, it'll... You there, Paddy? You're breaking up. There's an issue problem, apparently. Alright. Alright. Alright, um, what was I saying? Uh, um... Was I, uh, oh yeah, a dream is basically just... Taking a bunch of thoughts and putting them together. And that's why dreams are so bizarre, usually. So if you think of something during the day and dream about it, it's going to be... You're going to dream about it in a nonsense way. And how would it be nonsense when you could dream about but, um, something that's very important? Is it possible, Paddy, is it possible to have a dream that can come true. Uh, technically, yes, but it, it doesn't prove an actual causal relationship between them. Oh, so a dream can come true. Uh, yeah, but that doesn't mean that the dream is the cause of it coming true because it depends on... I mean, you could have a dream about a very generic situation. Like if you dream about yourself having dinner and you have dinner the next night, is that technically the dream coming true or is that just you dreamed about something that was like going to happen anyway? But you you just well said something there because if I had a dream if I had a dream about I had dinner if I had dinner and then 
dreamed about having dinner the next night. I never, you didn't mention anything about thinking there, Patty. But you would be remembering the fact that you had dinner the night before and the night before that and the night before that. So that can come true. Yeah, technically, but the dream isn't the reason it comes true. The The dream isn't, like, telling you via supernatural means that you're going to have dinner. It's just, um showing you something that is a routine. And so, is there any, like, un, is there any video evidence that all dreams are things that we think of? Uh, no, because you can't take a video of someone's dream. So then you can't know for sure that you thought about that dream, but then you know you had that dream, didn't you? Can you, can you know? Ask, Sorry, go ahead. You can ask someone if they've been thinking about something that they dreamt about the day before, and if, in all cases, they would have. So, if I told you that I know that I had a dream and it felt so real, which dreams do sometimes feel real, what would you say to that? say you had a lucid dream. It happens. So it does happen. So me having a vision and a dream of Jesus does happen. Yeah. Oh, so now you believe that, that Jesus can come. No, I don't believe that at all. Well, you said yeah. (laughs) No, I... Come on. What I said... I said that I believed that you had dreams and you thought that or you felt like that were real. I didn't say that I believed that there was a supernatural cause for the dreams. But if I was to tell you that I had a dream of seeing Jesus Christ and a vision, it would still come true, wouldn't it? But what, what would come true? What I told you, because I told you that I've seen Jesus Christ in a dream and a vision... Just like you can't see the, the wind, but you know it's there, you feel it. So The wind, it, right, the, so let's get this out of the way. The wind isn't a thing. The wind is a phenomenon that occurs within the air. You can see the air. You can't actually physically see the wind. <laughs> uh, yes, you can, because wind isn't a physical thing. It's a, it's a movement of air, and you can see air. So how can you see air? If it's concentrated enough, it's blue. That's why the sky is blue. What's the also color? Heat. What's the color of wind? Blue, technically, if we're talking about wind on Earth. But that's the sky. What? That's the sky, yeah. though, because the sky is yeah, all blue. The sky, no, the sky isn't blue. The atmosphere is blue. So the that's the atmosphere. Doesn't have a color. So, yeah, all right, yeah. well, we'll just keep to the topic of, of um, Jesus being real. Um, so basically, um, Jesus Christ is real because of eyewitnesses' accounts. That, that statement isn't true. How so? you could be insane for all I know and have hallucinations yeah that's that's assuming but that's not factual no so no, that's not assuming that's that you know it's a variable so basically in, in, sorry in this um, case you, you, in this case your mental health is a variable I don't actually know about what the state of your mental health is so I can't you know comment on whether or not it's likely you had an actual vision or a hallucination. So you can't... can't Sorry, kick on. I can't assume that you don't have hallucinations and I can't assume that you do. Ah, so if I have a dream and a vision of Jesus, it's not a hallucination. Well, technically it is. Because a dream is... But you just said that um, you, you... yeah, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't you say that um, you can't prove that my, the dream 
that is is not hallucination. Is that right? Um, I, I, the dreams are technically hallucinations, but I was talking about if you witnessed it while you were awake or anything like that. But even then, you know, your dreams are going to be much more... Your dreams would be different if you were prone to hallucinations. So, you can't prove with 100% accuracy that a dream is a hallucination? Yes, I can, because it is technically a form of hallucination. When I said hallucination, I I was actually being very... Um, I, I, I used the word wrong, really. I mean, I meant specifically hallucinations um, usually um, related to, like, the use of hallucinogenic drugs or um, mental illnesses such as schizophrenia. I did all hallucinations because obviously a dream is technically a hallucination. But the thing is, I don't take drugs. You don't take drugs, obviously, but yet you still dream, don't you? Yeah, but... But I, it can't be a hallucination, then? Yes, it can. I just said that I... There are several different types of hallucinations. Dreams are just natural hallucinations that everybody has because when you're asleep, your brain... There's no input to your brain, so it creates its own reality out of memories. Don't... don't cause this is what I always thought hallucinations was, right? Now, I thought hallucination was basically when someone smokes a lot of drugs like marijuana or all that stuff and they start seeing things and that. That drugs cause hallucinations, but not having drugs doesn't cause hallucinations. No, no. Um, taking drugs does cause hallucinations. Yes. Uh, but hallucinations aren't just caused by drugs you could I mean there, there's an experiment called the um, what was it called I think it's the Gansfield experiment where they gave a guy headphones with static audio playing through it and they put uh, they covered his eyes completely and so that basically took away all um, audio and visual input and he started hallucinating because um He'd been deprived of audio and visual input so that his brain had to create its own reality, which is what happens when you dream. So you're saying more or less that it's brainwaves activity that's going on in the brain? Yeah. But how can you prove that it's brainwaves? Because that's what there have been numerous scientific experiment studies that have proven that. Are they tested in test tubes? <laughs> All right, um, I'll get to the point, right? If, if right, there, there have been eyewitnesses that have seen Jesus Christ. you got Luke, you got the 12, 12 apostles. No, we can't use any... We can't use anyone from biblical times as an eyewitness because we can't actually, they aren't alive today for us to assess whether or not they were telling the truth or whether or not, you know, they were experiencing some kind of um, psychosis. We I can't actually... Take that. We, we can't use them as witnesses in this case. So I'll just go back in history, right? So if, if you say that, then how can you believe something like Hitler, like the stories about Hitler? So more or less you won't believe the stories of Hitler, like the people that read no. about him. See, there's books that have been written about Hitler, so they're all there's eyewitnesses. Also, so, there's also videos of his speeches. But how do you know that's real? How do you know that's Hitler himself? People have Be witnessed him and videotaped him. There's videos, there's photos. Also, he was very proud of the things he did. He wasn't, you know, going to hide behind a fake Hitler. Um, all of those videos were actually produced by the 
Nazi government of Germany for propaganda purposes. Tell me something, Paddy. Were there ever video videos back 2,000 years ago? No, there weren't. Ah, oh, so you don't actually need the video then, because if there wasn't, then you wouldn't need a video to show Jesus. doesn't make any sense. How doesn't it? Because there's, there was no technology of video cameras back then. That's 2,000 years ago until they came came into existence. Sorry, I missed the first part of that. But All right, I'll explain it. Video cameras, what year did the video cameras come into, like the video recorders? Um, about 1895. Now... Jesus was before that people recorded. That's why the Bible has been going throughout history. But that doesn't... (laughs) The issue isn't isn't video evidence. The issue is that the people that wrote the Bible aren't alive today, so we can't use them as reliable witnesses because we can't test just how reliable they are. Well, the thing is, if if it was, it, can you answer this one for me? Can a judge, can a judge, take a dead man's uh, witness report into account to prove someone for murder? Uh, uh, no, because a dead person can't give a witness statement. Well, what if the dead person did witness something and they did a statement up? and it was presented in court, it'd still be presented even though they passed on. You mean... So, you mean if they made the statement? Yeah, if someone... Let's say... Let's say if Jack saw uh, this guy walk up and stab this one person to death, witnessed the whole murder, and let's say Jack seen it and told the police that that person stabbed that person to death, witnessed it, the police took his statement then the person who killed that person comes after Jack because he witnessed the, the murder and he kills Jack and he, he, he really, the only evidence they got is the, um, the witness statement. Yeah, the statement which was made to the police and the police would have given him a polygraph test and uh, um, you know, but, tested his reliability but before it, yeah. they taking the statement. But it can still be produced as evidence, can't it? Yeah, because it has been verified as... Only if it's verified reliable, they're not going to use it if he is, has been shown to have lied or uh, but had any, made a mistake. Any witness... I've never had a paragraph, like, pap, whatever it's called, to see if he told the truth or not. And I was, I was to give witness statement in court... Now they took me word for it. I wasn't told, I wasn't put on a machine and all that stuff. But the thing is, if you the thing is, a judge can accept someone's witness testimony because they've witnessed it and they've came forward. It's just like the person's words. Like if someone was killed, then that person who witnessed the crime happening can have evidence, and evidence can be produced on paper, can't it, Paddy? Yes. So if that's the case, the judge would have to accept Jack, who was being killed, testimony that he witnessed and proved the person who killed them both, uh, killed that person plus the witness, Jack, um, proved that person guilty. They, But they wouldn't be accepting his word for it, because they would actually cross-reference it against the other evidence. So, but the, it, and the, it, if the judge has a cross reference to, cross reference to, with other stuff, then the judge does accept the grounds that, all right, well, it's still an eyewitness report. Yeah, but, um. It would have to go yes. into account. Yeah. And but go against um, they, the they only accept it if the evidence, if the like actual physical evidence of the crime fitted with what they were being told. So therefore, a judge would accept the mark 
who witnessed Jesus. If if the judge, that's why there's Bibles in courtrooms. See, the, the courtrooms accept the Bibles being in there. Why? Because they swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help me God. That's only in America. And Australia. I had to swear on the Is Bible. It? Yeah, I had to swear on the Bible. Right. On it. I didn't know that, but it's not everywhere. That's the point. And you can actually choose not to. Have you got any um, proof that you can choose not to? Use Google. How would the judge know for sure if you're telling the truth or not? Um, if, they, if what you were saying fitted with other evidence, or if you'd taken a polygraph test or done some kind of test of reliability. Does someone have but to... They don't, sorry, kick on. They don't necessarily know you're telling the truth. Um, in fact, this is why a lot of um, people get wrongly convicted of things. Yeah, there's some people that get wrongly convicted. <laughs> but the thing is, the evidence stands out, doesn't it? Yes. So if the evidence stands out, then it, pro it can prove the person guilty for that crime, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, but the, that doesn't necessarily mean they are guilty. That just means that the evidence suggests they're guilty. So if I was to ask a judge there are eyewitnesses accounts to Jesus being real in the Bible and that there's a lot of a lot of people who have witnessed Jesus Christ like the twelve apostles and all that and even though they're not around, the judge would still accept their witness reports. Um but there isn't there's no way to test their reliability. Well, That's the point I'm trying to make. You can't test whether they were lying or not. You can't test. There's no evidence with which to reference everything they're saying. All right. So, um, what about Hitler? If there was no video recordings of him, and w would you go off reliable source? Like, would you go off people's word that he said what he said? If there was no video recording of him. His ideas were published in children's school books. Well, Jesus... Is, yeah, kick on. There is actually... There's more evidence not in video sources about the things Hitler said than there are in his video sources. Because you've still got... You've got the documents that the Nazi government wrote. Yeah, um, also, you've got photos of concentration camps and photos of people that have been starved to death. So would you take let's say there's no let's say there was no let's say you take out the video evidence, right? Would you just solely accept the words of other people who have written about Hitler? Would you accept all the books that have been published about him, even though they were written by other people? Do you accept all those without looking too far into it? written by people who in a lot of cases are still alive and who have qualifications in history and who have, are demonstrably reliable. And they also present all the evidence that they're using to come to these conclusions. How old would Hitler be? Now, yeah. Hitler would be... Um, over 100? Just over 100. Now... He'd be about... Some of the people who are beside him, they'll be passed on by now, wouldn't they? Yes, but so some of the people, the yeah, some of the people who read about Hitler has died, has passed on, haven't they? Some of them, yes, but there's still people writing books about Hitler. There's still people writing books about every historical subject because that's the only way we can, have, you know, have a reliable knowledge of history because fact.